Drink your milk, kids. I don't want milk. Milk's for babies. Yeah, babies. Oh yeah? Well, I happen to know that milk helps build strong bones. So drink up. Well, Mr. Miller told me he never drinks milk. Look at him. Yeah. Hi, right, kids. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Got milk. Calcium is a secondary nutrient that comes from plants. Animals eat them and receive the molecule, but how and which is the best source? dive into the top sources of calcium from plants. Let's review the tape about milk being a source of calcium. Talking about dairy milk from cows, sheep, and other animals. This milk consumption has been scientifically studied and verified to promote cancers of various forms. As we see here, dietary intake, including links to prostate cancers, colon cancers, with meat and dairy consumption, Cancers of the lung with fat, uh, as dairy is a high source of animal fat. The comparison between dairy in the America and Japan, there's about a five-fold difference in their dairy consumption. And as you can see in a multi-country analysis, hip fractures and calcium consumed with an upward relationship. Hip fracture and dairy consumption, again, more dairy consumed, more likely you are to have your hip fractured. As we see here, dairy is deadly. For a greater explanation of how dairy is not making your bones strong by calcium in milk, let's check out Dr. Greger's video. Milk is touted to build strong bones. But a compilation of all the best studies found no association between milk consumption and hip fracture risk, so drinking milk as an adult may not help bones. But what about in adolescence? Harvard researchers decided to put it to the test. Studies have shown that greater milk consumption during childhood and adolescence contributes to peak bone mass, and is therefore expected to help avoid osteoporosis and bone fractures in later life. But that's not what they found. Milk consumption during teenage years was not associated with a lower risk of hip fracture, and if anything, milk consumption was associated with a borderline increase in fracture risk in men. It appears that the extra boost in total body bone mineral density you get from getting extra calcium is lost within a few years, even if you keep the calcium supplementation up. Uh, this suggests a partial explanation for the long-standing enigma that hip fracture rates are highest in populations with the greatest milk consumption. Uh, maybe an explanation why they're not lower, but why would they be higher? This enigma irked a Swedish research team puzzled because studies again and again had shown a tendency of higher risk of fracture with a higher intake of milk. Well, there is a rare birth defect called galactosemia, where babies are born without the enzymes needed to detoxify the galactose found in milk. So they end up with elevated levels of galactose in their blood, which can cause bone loss, even as kids. So maybe, the Swedish researchers figured, even in normal people that can detoxify the stuff, it might not be good for the bones to be drinking it every day. And galactose doesn't just hurt the bones. That's what scientists use to cause premature aging in lab animals. They slip them a little galactose, and you can shorten their lifespan, cause oxidative stress, inflammation, brain degeneration, uh, just with like the equivalent of you know, one to two glasses of milk's worth of galactose a day. Uh, we're not rats, though, but given the high amount of galactose in milk, Recommendations to increase milk intake for, for prevention of fractures could be a conceivable contradiction, so they decided to put it to the test, looking at milk intake and mortality, as well as fracture risk, to test their theory. 100,000 men and women followed for up to 20 years. What did they find? Milk-drinking women had, the high, had higher rates of death, more heart disease, significantly more cancer for each glass of milk. Three glasses a day was associated with nearly twice the risk of death, and they had significantly more bone and hip fractures too. 
Men in a separate study also had a higher rate of death with higher milk consumption, but at least they didn't have higher fracture rates. So a dose-dependent higher rate of both mortality and fracture in women, and a higher rate of mortality in men with milk intake. But the opposite for other dairy products like soured milk and yogurt, which would go along with the galactose theory, since bacteria can ferment away some of the lactose. To prove it, though, we need a randomized controlled trial to examine the effect of milk intake on mortality and fractures. As the accompanying editorial pointed out, uh, we better figure this out soon, as milk consumption is on the rise around the world. Thanks to Dr. Greger for clarifying the fact that calcium for strong bones is not made from deadly dairy products. If not animals, what calcium can come from plants. Here is a top selection of plant foods that is all around great for incorporating in your diet. Number one, we have sesame, including over 430 milligrams of calcium per 100 grams, weighing at the top of our list. This sesame paste is known as tahini, a silky, nutty taste originating from the Arabic word for to grind. We can include it in Middle Eastern cuisines such as with hummus, baba ganoush, or havla. Sesame seeds are full of calcium. They are nourishing for our bones, joints, ligaments, and all around an anti-inflammatory. Rich amounts, and please eat them every week for calcium benefits. All right, moving on to number two at our list. Coming at over 400 milligrams is the winged bean, a perfect vegetable for your calcium needs. Never heard of it? A legume species that originates from the Asian continent. Used in Southeast and Asian dishes, here is a Thai-style salad. It is uh, boiled before and added some Thai chili paste. Here it's eaten with a Thai chili dip and is absolutely delicious. Other stock beans and edible outer jacket legume varieties, such as French beans and long greens, contain this vitamin as well. Number three on our list, we have the soybean, a resilient bean, coming in at an average 350 milligrams per serving. Soybean can be coagulated and pressed into various styles of tofu. Originating in China over 2,000 years ago, its cultural significance is irreplaceable. Its calcium content is not the only benefit of this food product. It comes with other whopping amounts of plant protein, micronutrients, namely these isoflavones, as you see here. Uh, soy and tofu products can be processed to enthuse your taste buds with no lack of creativity, as you see here, the black stinky tofu. Next on our list, we have almonds. Nut coming in at 365 milligrams per serving. The origin of the almond is somewhere in the Mediterranean, Spain, and the Middle East. Cultivation early as 4000 BC. Its distinctive appearance and protein includes uh, beneficial plant fats, micronutrients, and these calcium benefits. The nut can be eaten straight off the tree, but the pro common practice is to dry it first. Next on our list, we have the flaxseed. Coming in at 255 milligrams per serving, or you may know it as linseed. Origin is in Egypt, with the cultivation spreading around colder climates in the world. Flax seeds can be used for its plant's oils, as well as calcium in micronutrients. Flax seed commonly is ground up into a paste and is used here in baked goods as an egg substitute, a vegan egg. Three to one ratio. Plant milk to flaxseed ground will do the trick. Next, we have a grouping that's uh, dark leafy greens, including collard greens and bok choy on our list here, coming in at an average of 150 milligrams per serving. So you can double it up on the serving if you really want to get your calcium hit for the day. Give you lots of variety here so there is no lack of creativity used in soups, stews, and any other way you'd like. Next one on our list is figs, coming in at 135 milligrams per serving. Figs is a perfect snack because you can consume it fresh or dried. Uh, origin is somewhere in the Mediterranean. These fig trees can grow for over 100 years. So it provides us a sustainable source of calcium that is easily digestible. Figs contain a high amount of edible seeds, 
And these micronutrients also include potassium, manganese, and vitamin K. Next one on our list is mustard greens, another great leafy green for our big calcium hit coming in at an average of 100 milligrams per serving. We can use mustard greens in salads and soups and stir fries, anything for an added flavor. We've got a pack of calcium as well as a punch of antioxidants, vitamin K and vitamin C. Next one on our list, we're bringing it up to the broccoli. Love it or hate it, broccoli has a good source of calcium. I'm honestly at 75 milligrams. Broccoli is specially grown and breeded since 6 BC in Italy and Europe for its prized lush green edible flowering head. As you see, broccoli has calcium fiber plant proteins, micronutrients such as vitamin C, K, folate, and potassium. Next one on our list, we have oranges. Oranges are the last plant food squeezing in, coming at 70 milligrams. We can use it whole or juiced, any good way to boost your immune system, including vitamin C, an all-around antioxidant, keep your skin glowing, your blood healthy, and even studied as a cancer treatment. Citrus fruits in general give you a great all-around glow and feeling healthy. All right, to recap, we have the top sources of calcium in plant sources for 100 gram serving. All of the plants that you see here have not only a good amount of calcium, but other micronutrients, fiber, and other vitamins. Make sure you guys get your calcium from plants. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and check out my website at The Vegan Food Scientist. I'll leave you with this American ad. Just remember that plant sources are the best. 7 Up Plus with calcium. With a burst of real fruit juice, 10% of your daily calcium, and only 10 calories per serving. It's one thing strong women everywhere can't get enough of. Seven Up Plus. For great taste with calcium, the only way to go is up.